Let's see if we can evaluate this indefinite integral. And the clue that trig substitution might be appropriate is what we see right over here in the denominator under the radical. In general, if you see something of the form a squared minus x squared, it tends to be a pretty good idea, not always, but it's a good clue that it might be a good idea to make the substitution x is equal to a sine theta. Because if you do that, then this will become a squared minus a squared sine theta. And if you factor out the a squared, you can start leveraging, this is a squared, you can leverage one of the most basic trig identities that this right over here is cosine squared theta and maybe simplify the expression. Now you're probably saying, well, this eight minus two x squared, doesn't, it's not as obvious that it's a squared minus x squared, but we could simplify this, or I guess we can write it in a way that it starts to have this pattern. You can rewrite eight minus two, let me write it right under it. You could write eight minus two x squared as, if we factor out a two, as two times four minus x squared. And now this very clearly has a pattern a squared minus x squared. You could write this as two times two squared minus x squared. So in this case, a would be equal to two. So let's make that substitution. Let's make the substitution that x is going to be equal to two, two sine, theta, and dx is going to be equal to two cosine theta, d theta. So what's this part under the expression going to be? Well, we already started simplifying it right over here. It's going to become two times two squared minus x squared. x squared is two sine theta, so x squared is going to be two squared sine theta squared. And now we can factor out the two squared. So we're going to get, this is going to be two times two squared times one minus sine squared theta. Two times two squared, well that's just going to be eight times cosine squared cosine squared theta. That's what we have under the radical. So let's do that. Let's re rewrite this thing up here. So we're going to have, we're going to have, and I'll take the pi outside of the, outside of the integration. So we're gonna have pi times dx. dx is two cosine theta d theta. So it's going to be, let me make it clear. So dx, I want to do that in blue. dx, dx right over there is two cosine theta d theta. So let me write that, two cosine theta. And I'll write the d theta out here. I could have written it in the numerator. And then here in the denominator, I'm going to get the square root of this business, the square root of eight cosine squared theta. So the square root of that is going to be two square roots of two. The square root of eight is two square roots of two. So let me write this, so let me make it clear what I'm doing. So this right over here is going to be the square root of this, which is two square roots of two, that's the square root of eight, and the square root of cosine squared theta is going to be cosine theta. Cosine, cosine theta. Now you might be saying, hey, wait, if I take the square root of something squared, then wouldn't that just be the absolute value of cosine theta? In order to take away the absolute value, I'd have to assume that cosine theta is positive. But we can, we can make that assumption that cosine theta is positive because if we look at this part, if we look right here at this part of our substitution, if we wanted to solve for theta, you divide both sides by two and you'd get x of two is equal to sine of theta, or we could say that theta is equal to arc sine, arc sine of x over two. Now the arc sine function, as it is traditionally defined, will return a theta that is between pi over, or between negative pi over two and pi over two. And in that range, cosine of theta is always going to be positive. So we, can, we don't have to write the absolute value, we know cosine theta is positive. So now we can start to simplify it. Cosine theta cancels out with cosine theta, this two cancels out with this two, we could bring this square root of two outside, and so we are left with pi, over this square root of two, over the square root of two, times the indefinite integral of just d theta. And this is just going to be equal to pi over the square root of two times, times theta plus c. And we're almost done, we just have to rewrite this in terms of x. And we already know that theta is equal to arc sine of x over two, so we can say that pi, this indefinite integral, or the antiderivative of this expression is going to be pi over the square root of two times arc sine, arc sine of x over two plus c. And we're done. Some people don't like a square root of two in the denominator. If you want to remove it, you can multiply this by square root of two over two, uh, square root of two 
over square root of 2, and that will simplify it. But right now, I just leave the denominator in irrational form. And this right over here is our antiderivative.